Hello, it's been a minute. Um, I am going to go through some code today. I've been working on the ink plugin. I've been working crazy hard on it. Um, I've been a little silent lately working on it. Um, I had two weeks off over Christmas and I thought, oh, you know what, I'm going to spend those two weeks trying to get um, the ink plugin to where I want it to be. Um, but I hit a couple of roadblocks and, and was banging my head against the wall on, on some things. So I have, uh, so I kind of put it down for a couple of days and then picked it up again. Um, and that streaming speed looks a bit average. Let's see how this goes. Might be a bad stream, but I haven't done it in a while, so we'll see. Uh, so let's have a look. So um, previously, you might remember the current implementation of uh, ink embeds uh, based off. I don't think I have any here. Let's see. No. No. Oh, here we go. Um, based off code blocks. So you can see here it's got three back ticks and then a hand drawn ink section. And then it's got a whole bunch of settings. Now, what that means is if you turn off the plugin, so let's go to the plugin um, and we'll turn it off. All of those just appear like that, which isn't great. Um, and also it's not performant. If you have heaps on a page, they actually start disappearing after about five. Um, I've been hitting that barrier myself. Um, so I wanted to turn them into normal embeds. Um, if I look at this one, so this is the example, this is, um, how I implemented it first. I'm going to go, go into a bit of code. So this, this episode is, is kind of more focused for coders if you're interested in, in plugging, building Obsidian plugins and seeing how the sausage is made. This is for you. Um, but essentially, if I go to source mode, source mode, uh, let's go reading view. Um, you'll see that this is actually just a standard embed. So it's, it's an SVG. Um, and if I copy this, I can actually, I'm not sure if I can copy it in here. Let's go back and reveal in finder. And I will open that in sublime. Okay. So here's what the, no, here's what the file actually looks like. Um, so it's got just like this normal markdown link. And if I copy this down here, I can get rid of all my garbage that I've added in here and you might recognize it. This is a standard markdown, um, image embed, right? So it's li image linking to an SVG. Now if I save that and I view that over here, you can see it's a standard, it shows normally. Um, and even if I turn off the plugin, turn it off, go anywhere else, come back. Um, it's just how Obsidian does it anyway. So it's a standard image embed. It'll always show up regardless of whether you've got the plugin installed. Um, but what this does is it adds to that. So with an image embed, you have like an alt text as well you can put here. So I'm using that for ink drawing. That helps me know that it's an ink drawing that I should progressively enhance. Um, then I have a bunch of settings after it. So if we look at these settings, we've got it's version one of a drawing. 
it's uh, got a particular width and a particular aspect ratio. And then we've got um, the view camera view inside that. And, and I'm, I'm just kind of, I haven't implemented these yet. I've only implemented the start stuff. Um, but if I save that, you see, um, currently it looks normal. Um, but that's because, I'll, I'll move this out of the way. That's because um, it only applies, I oh know it's because, what am I in? No, I'm incorrect. Um, that's because if I look at the code, this is using code mirror and it's creating this embed widget. And there it's creating a react embed, react app. And then if we look at the embed state field, which is what manages all the embeds in the, the view, it creates with no decorations. Uh, decoration is what an embed is essentially. Um, and then every time it updates, it um, looks for, it looks through the whole tree of the document and it looks for, uh, sorry, it might look through the changes of the document. I can't remember, but anyway, it's looking through the tree and it's looking for certain things. So if uh, it finds that, let me go down. Oh no, I put it into a function. This is going to be hard to follow for anyone, but I'm going to go through it anyway. Detect markdown embed link, right? So in this line here, it's sending in the node tree, the syntax tree, and it's looking for the embed. So the first thing it does is it looks for a blank line. Then it looks for a an exclamation mark. Then it looks for a uh, open square bracket and then the correct alt text. So if we go down here, we can say, okay, it checks for uh, if the node that it detects is going to an exclamation mark. If it isn't, it leaves it alone and it doesn't go any further. If it is, then it checks for um, if there were was a blank line before it and I had to do it in that order because blank lines don't appear as nodes. Um, then it checks for the square bracket and then it keeps going um, and it checks for um, if that alt text in the middle is an ink is ink drawing, and if it isn't, if it isn't any of these things, then it's not an ink embed. It's a normal embed, so it leaves it alone. So it gets all the way to the bottom, and then it says, "Oh, okay, it is an ink, ink embed, and it's an ink drawing embed. So uh, replace that section." Or, or part this function passes back the information needed to replace that section. So if I go back, you can see we do that up here. And then it says, okay, if it is an embed link info, then we're going to feed that into the builder. There's so much extraneous code here because um, I've been messing around with it. Um, and turn it into uh, the actual ink embed. So let's jump back and let's see if this works. So what have I changed? I've changed something. Yes. So what I found was I'm trying to replace this, but the problem is that this image is already a decoration that Obsidian creates. And so it's replacing this with this image and then it's hiding this. And then because of its decoration, my decoration isn't working and I can't set it to be a higher priority. So what I found was if I set uh, the start position and end position to one earlier and one later, I can essentially override the obsidian decoration, but it doesn't quite work properly uh, as here. So you can see 
Uh, let me just undo that for a sec. Okay, so back we're back back to normal. This is working as it was. Now I haven't I've taken off that plus one minus one. Uh, I don't know what it was doing before, but essentially, yeah, this my version of the embed doesn't appear unless I click there and and that text appears again for my decoration to replace it. So it's not very good, right? It doesn't really work. Um, but what I found was if I go one earlier and one later, I can take over. I can essentially be higher priority than the Obsidian one and I can prevent that from happening. So now you'll see I take over it entirely. Now you might think that's done, but it's it's not because notice where my cursor is. If I go down one and then down one and then down one again, notice how then it stayed in the same place. It's getting stuck inside it. Um, and that's not that big a deal, except that if I type up here, so let's say, let's say hello. But if I go down and type here, it starts typing backwards. Um, it's a bad example of it. There's some things in here that mean it, it it's hard, a little bit hard to see. Um, but essentially it was getting stuck in the embed and typing backwards there. So what I found was I had to do it two before and two after. So start position negative minus equals two and position plus equals two. Um, and that meant that when I, well, when I check for this, I'm actually checking to see whether it has a blank line before and blank line after. So in the source, it'll always have to have a blank line before or blank line after. So if I, save that and I go back now it works beautifully and you can see we've lost those lines in between here and in between here um, and I can go here and I can press backspace and it disappears and it all works perfectly I can highlight this and it highlights everything in between and I can get rid of it um, but what that means is that in the source, there's actually a blank line and when it embeds, it'll put a blank line, which is fine. If I remove that black line, then it'll break it. So now it's turned into a normal embed. But if I add that blank, blank line back in, it turns into the ink embed. So really, you can only break it if you go to the source mode and start messing with this. That's fine. Um, but if you're just working in here in the visual editor, essentially, and you do some things, um, it'll always keep it right for you. Um, but essentially I've solved that problem. So now I can turn these into, um, normal embeds that even if you turn off the plugin, um, so let's turn off the plugin they will still show as images. So they don't get all the whiz-bang features that you have when you have the plugin installed. Um, they essentially go into a read-only mode and they just show as images. Um, now there's a lot I haven't done yet. I've just done the basics of converting that, but I've solved that big problem now. So uh, now I'll keep building it out and hopefully um, sometime in the next couple of weeks, I'll be able to release a new version that updates all the embeds and that means everything will run off will display off SVGs which means if you have heaps of them on the page they'll all show fine and it'll scroll fine and the performance will be much better and I'll be able to also enhance things like when you go to embed an existing image I can create a custom dialog that shows you the existing drawings you have in a, in a in a, in pictures in a visual way rather than just relying on text um, and having to look at the file names. Um, but that's it. Um, bit of a long one talking through code. 
Um, to anyone who, who's watched this far, which is probably nobody, um, hopefully that that was interesting in terms of how the sausage is made, how the, how the thing's built. Um, if you're building something similar and you have some questions, how did I figure out this or how did I actually structure it? Feel free to look at the code. You can, you can go and look at it. It's in a branch at the moment called release underscore 0.4. Um, and also feel free to ask me questions about it. Um, but that's it. Thanks guys. See you later.